Okay, this is the first part of my video in which we are going to build a bench power supply using the power supply from a TV. This is the power supply board from an old TV that got struck by lightning, had to replace the fuse, the motherboard got fried. And today I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, these guys right here are very dangerous. I may not be a smart man, but I do know about electricity. Okay, I'm what you call an educated redneck. If you do not understand what voltage and current is, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. All right, let me explain a little bit about voltage voltage and current. Okay, one of the big misconceptions that's ever been told is that it is the amps that kill you and not the voltage. All right, voltage is pressure and amperage is substance. It's the, the amount of electrons that are flowing. All right, that's kind of like saying... It wasn't the heart attack that killed them. It was the lack of blood flow to the brain that killed them. They both work together. It takes two to tango. All right, if you have a cannon and you pack it full of black powder and you put feathers in it, that would be high voltage with low amperage. And if you fired it, the feathers wouldn't hurt anybody. But if you took a bowling ball and rolled it barely rolled it at somebody and it hit them it would not hurt them it's the same way it takes two to tango if you uh, take a 12 volt car battery which let's say has 600 amps in it and you touch both terminals there is not enough pressure to break down in your body to actually put that amount of amperage in you um, one day I'll probably make a video and I'll explain Ohm's Law and, and explain everything about how it, resistance works and how it breaks down and everything. But um, the big thing is, if you don't have high voltage, you can't have the pressure to send the amperage through you. So whenever you are dealing with things that are higher than, let's say, uh, 40, 50 volts, Everything under that is pretty safe. Everything above that can be very dangerous. Okay, now I have a set of 12 volt LED lights. We're going to hook the positive to it, then the negative, and we're going to crank the voltage up. At 13 volts, we're drawing two and a half amps. Look, I'm touching everything. Nothing is happening to me. Of course, I have current protection on my power supply, but you get the point. Okay, this power supply will put out three and a half volts at 1.9 amps, 12 volts at 2.8 amps, and 20 volts at 1.1 amps. We're probably going to utilize the 20 volt side of it. I really don't use too much things that um, use over an amp, so. Okay, let me show you something about this. With the capacitors storing electricity, I'm going to remove Carefully remove the power. Watch this. That is dangerous, folks. That would hurt you very bad. Turn you into popcorn. Okay, now we're going to try to look at the pin out of the power supply and we can see what all the pins do and all the voltage. And if you look right there to the top left, it says power on. 
So now what we have to do is jump the power on with 3.5 volts. So we need to take one of the 3.5 volt wires and connect it to the power on. And then we're going to take all of the 20 volt wires and we're going to connect them together and take all the ground wires and connect those together. I have all the wires labeled. I've tested them. Okay, we're going to take the blue wire, which is the power on wire, and we are going to connect it together to 3 volts. And that's going to give us power on the board. Now I'm going to bring my multimeter in here. And we're going to set it 19 volts. And then ground it. And 19 and a half volts. And we, like I said, we should be drawing about one amp through that. So that's what we're going to use. I may use the 12 volt too, where we can get about two amps. Okay, I measured that board and uh, it measured out uh, roughly eight inches by 10 inches. So I'm actually going to start working on forming a case up and I'm going to build it out of uh, some aluminum sheet. And it's roughly going to look like this. It's going to be about 12 inches here. We're going to make it 10 inches this way. And I'm probably going to go about 4 or 5 inches here. And then I'll um, take this flat piece of aluminum and I'll break it and form it up. Um, and then I'll build a, um, a face plate for it. And then I'll probably come back and put a top cap and a rear piece for it out of aluminum. And once I have that formed up, I uh, will probably put a piece of rubber in the bottom of it so I can set the board to insulate it. And once I get that formed up, I'll be back and we'll start on part two.